So by way of comparison, I'll tell you about the Lumilo project, which is a project that Bruce and I are doing with, uh, together with Ken Holstein, who was a third year PhD student and has really made this project his own in a way that I wouldn't have imagined at the outset. So very impressive. So Lumilo, like Argonaut that Bruce told you about, is a teacher awareness tool or a teacher classroom orchestration tool. It was designed by, for, and by K-12 teachers. So here you see, and the hardware here is mixed reality glasses, so the Microsoft HoloLens. So the teacher, as you can see here, wears these glasses. So these are not virtual reality glasses, they're actual glasses, so you can see through them. And then overlaid over the image, of, over the classroom, are the analytics. So if I'm looking at Rich and Kurt, for example, with these glasses, I might see smiley faces above their heads, indicating that they are actually making good progress on the material to be learned, just as an example. And here, students are working with an equation-solving tutor, a simple tutoring system, is actually not that important. The teacher during these classroom sessions has their hands free to help students, but that is challenging, for example, because the um, the students who need help the most, so, the, so the, not all students are successful with the tutoring software, but the students who need help the most aren't always the ones that are sort of most adamantly requesting the teacher's attention and help. Intelligent tutoring systems generate many, many analytics, um, the result of, of 30 years of AI ad research and research in educational data mining, just to list a few. And I'm just showing you this to show that the, here the challenge is not to come up with new analytics, but the challenge is to design something that is useful for teachers. So that the te what analytics do they need? How can we make them interpretable? And how can we make them actionable for teachers? And to achieve that, Ken Holstein, whom you see here on the right, worked a lot with teachers in the process of human-centered design with many, many activities. So this is a prototyping activity. So the glasses that the teacher is wearing are a prototype for what later became the, the current smart classes. Uh, so the smarts aren't built into the glasses, but they're simulated and there is no dynamic time. But there were many, many of such activities, which is an interesting talk in itself. The net result was that this long list of analytics was actually narrowed down to five that teachers thought would be most useful if, the, if they could have them in real time, including focus on struggling students. They really wanted to help struggling students. But they were also wanted to know why students are doing well, like Rich and Kurt here have these smileys above their, above their heads. And just to, to give you a sense, this is the view through the glasses. So the zzz means off task. So here you see what that looks like. Yep, that's not working on the tutor. And then the teacher can also pull up uh, what we call these deep dive screens where they get more information about the student. They can, in fact, from a distance, look at the student's screen. So here, Oliver Carey is not the real name, but they can see what the student anywhere in the room is currently working on. And they can get some more information about the student's area of struggle, which would then help them decide whether to, whom to help and how to help them, maybe. And here you see some CMU students actually uh, playing the role of middle school students, and it looks a little hectic, frankly. We didn't have IRB approval for real classrooms. So like Bruce, we, wanted to, we did a classroom evaluation. Uh, so we really wanted to know when the teacher has this kind of tool, what happens? How does it affect the teacher's processes? How does it affect students' learning processes? And how does it affect students' learning outcomes? And so we have data about all three, but we'll, uh, I'll tell you only about the student learning results. In this study, we had three conditions. So the Lumilo condition, teacher uses the glasses with the analytics. And then we had two control conditions. One in which the teacher had glasses, uh, so, but there were no analytics. So mixed reality is simple monitoring tool, you might say. They could still look at a student screen from a distance. Then a no glasses control condition, which is basically business as usual in classrooms that use intelligent tutors where the teacher has no real-time awareness tools. We had 343 participating students, 18 classrooms, eight teachers, and all students did a pretest uh, for equation solving, then worked with the tutoring software and did a post-test. And here you see the results. So pretest result and post-test results for each of those three conditions. So remember, post-test minus pre-test is how much was learned. And so what we see is all three conditions learned, so the tutoring system was effective, but that we knew already from ample research results in other studies. 
But when teachers have Lumilo, you can see the red condition here. Students learn more than when teachers don't have Lumilo, so the blue condition. And we can actually rule out that this effect is entirely due to some novelty effect about the fact that everybody is excited that the teacher has these glasses, which might lead to better learning. Because even, even the Lumilo is more effective than just having the glasses. So it's a remarkable result, I would say, um, if you consider that how indirect the influence is. So we're, we're um, giving the glasses to teachers, and then teachers influence students. And the control condition, actually a very high bar control condition, given all the results in the literature that show that intelligent tutoring systems are very effective. So I would call this a uh, sort of successful instance of human AI inter of human AI partnerships, like the AI informs the teacher about, makes them more aware of what's going on in their classrooms, and then the teachers can use that information to help students who, who uh, aren't being successful with the software, for whom the software just isn't helping. So two examples that illustrate an impact of teacher tools. Uh, we emphasize this theme of a well-designed human AI partnership, so the, uh, so the, the AI uh, enhances what teachers do. Um, and the teachers take care of the things that the AI is maybe not so good at doing. And there are lots of interesting uh, directions for the future here, uh, focused on making the AI more interpretable or designing more interpretable AI so the teachers understand more of the background of the recommendations that the system makes. Uh, although initially the teachers really wanted awareness support only. They wanted to be informed, but they didn't want any guidance as to what to do. Uh, but uh, with the more um, realistic prototypes, which involve the sort of dynamic hecticness of the classroom, they, they change their minds about this and are increasingly interested in also having some support for decision making. And another request we get a lot from teachers is whether the AI can somehow help them improve their teaching. So if the AI, so the AI can know when teachers are interacting with students in one-on-one -on -one during these lab sessions with tutors. And so, um, uh, that could be an opportunity to get some feedback based on data for the teachers that might help them improve their teaching. So, we have some time for questions. Two minutes. Please. Uh, I totally am on board with this idea of a, a intelligent support for teachers. Uh, tell a little story. Larry Cuban, a historian of technology and education, pointed out that uh, 15 years ago, the only technology in the classroom was not TVs, not radio, not even uh, those new computers, those Macintoshes. It was the projector. And if you go into a classroom today, it's still projected. Uh, so getting out there and helping the teachers drive their car is what we should be doing. And you don't do that by sitting in the lab. Yeah, and so I agree there's sort of, yeah, so there are many challenges left and in including this sort of more open-ended activities, collaborative activities, uh, where language uh, plays a much bigger role in the Um, so, 
uh, and what I didn't show you was we, in, we, we also looked at how po uh, post-test scores correlate with pre-test scores. So, so what you often find in educational research is that the students who do better on the pre-test also do better at the post-test. But interestingly, um, due to the glasses, um, that regression line tilted, in other, which means that actually the students who were helped the most when the teacher has the glasses are the students who had low pre-tests. So they did better than they would have done otherwise without the glasses. And some additional data analysis actually showed that, this, that there was really a redistribution of, of the teacher's attention. So, um, so I had mentioned teachers want to spend their time with the struggling students. Uh, but they can't always know who are the struggling students. And now they have some more information about this. Um, it's also interesting to note that without the glasses, teachers still think they spend their time with the struggling students. But the data doesn't always confirm that. So, so, it's in, so that's why these glasses can be effective. I'm actually going to go back to Kurt's question and, um, uh, and say that, that um, yes, this may be an easier case of the, of the hardest instance of these problems. Um, but nonetheless, I was surprised that, that we actually saw improved learning results uh, in classes where the teacher has these tools because, because the, the sort of the causal chain is sort of is very, very long. Like the teacher becomes more aware, then it has to go over to the student and do something useful. These little teaching moments aren't, are actually very challenging, I think, for teachers, even in these well-structured domains. They still have to, they have to diagnose the problem really quickly. While they're helping the students still sort of behind them, all kinds of stuff is happening that maybe they don't. So, so it's actually, um, I think this is one of the reasons why a lot of intelligent tutoring systems research over the years has focused so much on the student system interactions. So, so anyway, we're discovering all kinds of really interesting things about these interactions with tutors. And I, I also think uh, that's where, in this area at least, the use of AI should be going. Like we, we really um, have to look for partnerships. There are still many things that teachers do better than AI. It's totally not about replacing teachers. It's, it's about helping them do their jobs better. Sometimes the AI doesn't know its limitations, which can really lead to problems. Um, and, the teach, and there, the teacher is really the last resort. So if these kinds of tools can help surface these problems, maybe while we're also working on making the, the software itself better so that they occur less frequently, then, then I think it's a big win.